Hey everyone, Miss E here, and today we're going to learn about the color wheel. Now I have here a artist color wheel right here, and so it's a little more in depth than what we've had in our school. Um, as you can see, um, instead of it being separated by um, six blocks of colors, it's separated by uh, many more. Now, the reason why it's really important for artists to know um, the color wheel is it displays um, a lot of relationships of colors. For example, it shows um, what the primary colors are, what the secondary colors are, analogous colors, complementary colors, and warm versus cool. And this is a really helpful tool for artists who, when they're using color. So for example, on mine right here, on the back, we have different tints and shades of um, each color. And on the front, we have a little um, part right here that shows what our colors would look like if we added maybe um, red or yellow or blue, like one of the primary colors right here, or what it would look like if we added white, which would make it a tint, or if we added black, which would make it a shade. So for example, let's look at our red for a minute. And so this is what our red looks like, but when we add black, see how it's so much darker? It's because it's a shade. Whereas our red violet, which is a combination of red and purple, um, when you add white, it makes it look even lighter. And then when you have violet and blue, it makes a blue violet. If you add yellow, your blue violet turns into a green color. And then we have blue when you add red and it turns violet itself. So this is, like I said, a really cool tool for artists to have. And so that's what we're gonna base our project off today. So we've had some um, kind of interesting weather. We, it snowed this morning and it rained um, a few days ago. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a color wheel umbrella. So let's first start by making a circle. And it's okay if your circle is not perfect. You can use a, um, a circular surface and you can trace around it. So for example, maybe I need to use this and I can take a pencil or a marker and I can trace around it. But like I said, it's okay if it's not perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a few lines. This is gonna separate our um, color wheel. And we're gonna draw a line straight across. You can use a ruler for this. Then we're gonna draw a line going from one side down. We're gonna draw another line going from the other side down. Kind of making an X. So now we have six different um, parts of our color wheel. So um, we're not gonna go as advanced as this color wheel. Um, we're gonna go with the one that you have seen at school. So we're gonna first start by reviewing our primary colors and we're gonna color in the area where the primary colors are. And the first one we're gonna start with is red. We're gonna go color red up here. Now remember red and its other two primary colors, they're primary because um, they cannot be created by mixing two other colors. Kind of a good tip for that is um, primary can also mean one. So we're going to color this in. And we're going to skip this um, uh, triangle and we're going to move on to the next one because our primary ones, they touch in the center, but they don't touch each other on the color wheel. So after we do our red, we're going to color this one yellow. So we're going from the top and across, uh, we're going from the top and we're going clockwise. Now the placement of the colors on here tells you a lot about the colors, um, which we'll discuss while we're working on this. And the next color, remember, because it's a primary, we're going to skip this one right here and we're going to go to this one right here. It's going to be blue. 
So our three primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. I'm just gonna go all the way in. Remember, we're gonna try to color the whole thing, leave no white. So those are our primary colors. And like I said, they don't touch one another. Um, and there's actually a reason for that, uh, which we'll get on with our next part, which is secondary colors. So secondary colors are when two colors, two primary colors mix um, to make a new color. So when I take red and I take yellow and I mix them together, I get orange. Now the reason we left this area blank is because we put our secondary color in here. So it's kind of like um, a cheat sheet to remind you what two primary colors make a secondary color. So then we're gonna mix yellow and blue together and the color that goes right here is green. So we're gonna color that right now And finally, when we mix our blue and our red together, we get purple. So we're gonna color that in right now as well. All right, and we have a simple color wheel. Now, the reason why our professional color wheel right here has more than six is because they are not only doing our primary colors and our secondary colors, but they're also using what's called tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are when you mix a primary color, like red, and a secondary color, like purple, and you get a new color. So when we take our red right here and we mix it with our violet right here, our tertiary color is red violet so it'll be more like a purple that ha has a little more red in it than a normal purple so before we move on i'm going to add some extra details to let you know um, a little bit more about our color wheel so for example um one thing about our color wheel is that the location of colors help tell us which ones are warm colors and cool colors so if we take a line and we block out these colors right here these three are warm colors and if we move our line right here and we hide those three colors we have our cool colors right here also if we draw imaginary lines going up and down um, across certain colors we have our complementary colors so the complementary color of red is green for yellow the complementary color is blue and then for purple its complementary color is yellow um, and then also we have analogous colors which are three colors that share um, a primary color so for example our yellow shares orange and green our prime our analogous colors for um, blue is purple and green because they share blue and then for our red we have orange and pur uh, orange and purple. So that's some fun facts. I just thought I'd let you know that. So we're going to continue drawing now. And Miss E is going to find her marker, which is right here. And so we're going to continue drawing our, um, our scene to make it look like an umbrella. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this box-like shape right here. Now this is going to be our little raincoat of our person who is holding the umbrella. Then we're going to add two lines right here and two lines right here. And these are going to be our legs. Then we're going to add those lines right here. That's going to be like the bottom of our legs. And then we're going to draw kind of like an oval right here. An oval right here. These are going to be our shoes and I'm going to have ours, our person right here wearing a yellow long raincoat. So I'm going to color 
my raincoat in yellow, but your raincoat can look like what you have um, or what you've seen. So, um, so yeah, I've always wanted a yellow raincoat. Um, and then we're gonna color our legs. My person's gonna wear some jeans. So we're gonna have some blue. And let's see, I'm gonna have, you know what? I'm gonna have my own black sneakers make a cameo by coloring them right here. So now we have our person holding our umbrella. So it's like as if we had, we're looking at them from behind. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some, um, a line right here. This is gonna be where our ground meets our sky. And then we're gonna add some puddles. Now our puddles don't have to be completely circular. In fact, it kind of looks more fun when they're not. And then you can just start coloring in. You can add more to your picture. So I'm gonna add some, um, actually, yeah. I'm gonna add some sidewalk right here. And I'm gonna color the sidewalk. I'm gonna add some grass. I'm going to color a sky. But of course, what I need to have is some rain. So I'm going to start coloring this. And I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to show you what it looks like after I've colored it in a few moments. So let's take a look at this in five, four, three, two. And here we have it. So this is mine. So what I did in the background is I added some trees, but I also made it kind of like a dark day out. Like, you know, when it rains and um, there's like, it's really dark outside. So I just added some dark shadows in the back. And what I also did was I added some raindrops. Now you can add just blue raindrops, but what you can also do is you can take a ruler and your marker or your pencil to get a more added effect is you can use a straight line and draw lines going all the way down. Now this will make it look like it's not drizzling out, but that it's pouring out. And also think about how your rain is going to look. Is it going to, um, is it going to be a lot of rain? Is it going to be some rain? Is it going to be a light drizzle? Um, that's entirely up to you. I want mine to kind of look like it's raining pretty hard. So, and also by having some of your pencil and your, your blue, um, be for your rain, it's going to show like a ver uh, like a variety of rain. So like when you see it raining outside, sometimes the droplets are not always the same. Um, sometimes you have really light, um, uh, haze of, of raindrops or sometimes you have like really really big um, pieces um, so and the only other thing that I'm gonna add for a tip is think about your umbrella your umbrella protects your person from the rain so you're not gonna be wanting to add some rain underneath the umbrella because our rain is um, being repelled off of our color wheel off of our umbrella so we're not going to have any rain going underneath the umbrella. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed our project um, and you learned a little bit more about the color wheel. So with that being said, my friends, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.